Meanwhile, we can look at the code a little bit. The, the API that is uh, uh, recommended to be used uh, for beginners is the simplified API. Uh, there's also the, the core API, which is uh, more capable, but also more complex. Uh, and you can do many, many things with the simplified API. That's why we recommend it to be used first. So after opening some file, uh, you can see that uh, the JDK module is not defined. So let's click here to set set it up, and you can simply select the the, the version that gets recommended. Right. We don't need this. We don't need this. For some reason, Gradle is still importing this project, so I am not sure why this is, but I'm just going to cancel cancel it and uh, restart restart the ID. Okay, I've restarted uh, the program and it took a while before all the importing and indexes were uh, calculated. Now it is done here. You can uh, avoid downloading prepared shared indexes like this. All right, so let's uh, compile this code into uh, a jar file. A jar file is essentially packed, uh, compiled Java code, uh, which is then imported into Bookmap. How to compile this code? Uh, this is done using Gradle, and you can either you can either open build.gradle here and find the jar task and run it here like this, or open the Gradle tab and under tasks build double click the jar task. So let's do this, and the code is being compiled now. And the resulting file is written under build libs. So this is the the jar file that is the output of this compilation, which can be imported into Bookmap. Let's try out one of these indicators. And one very simple uh, indicator is this last trade demo no history, which just updates the indicator's value Whenever a trade happens, this code uh, basically has a callback on trade, and uh, the indicator which is specified in, in this field is updated with with the trade's price. So let let let's test it. I'm going to connect to one of the connectivities on the exchanges so let's say the, the the Kraken futures exchange to their ethereum uh, perpetual instrument and uh, I'm going to add the indicator by clicking this button or going under settings and configure add-ons and here I'm gonna click add and select the jar that was built by us previously and there are several indicators that are uh, that are present in this jar file the one that I'm uh, interested in in now is is the one that is whose name is specified here so last trade live let's see where this indicator is located let's trade li is let's, uh, let's trade live right okay uh, the indicator is now loaded and i'm going to enable it and once i enable it uh, it gets displayed here 
and as we observe the next trade happening in the market the indicator should get updated all right so a trade happened here at this price and from now on uh, the indicator's value is going to be this last trade and let's wait for another trade to happen okay another trade happened and uh, the indicator was updated of course this is extremely simple and tr trivial uh, indicator you can write any custom logic you want here now let's write our own indicator uh, and for example we can write an exponential moving average indicator which is pretty simple to uh, calculate so let's do that let's create uh, a new Java class here called maybe EMA the first thing that we have to do is add a few annotations let's say that I open one of the other uh, indicators and I simply copy the uh, annotations that are required here the first one is uh, layer one simple attachable second one is the name so I'm gonna rename this to simply EMA and the third one is the version uh, this is used for uh, for compat compatibility reasons uh, the best thing is that you simply use the latest one that is currently available in my case at this moment it is two uh, and uh, we have to implement uh, the first uh, interface which is called custom module that uh, that is going to uh, give us uh, two methods that are called one is the initialize and uh, another is the stop method and the initialize method gets called whenever the indicator uh, is loaded and the stop uh, method gets called when it, when it is unloaded so what do we want to do here we essentially want to set up our indicator line uh, inside of the in initialize um, uh, method and we can basically ignore the stop method how do we initialize the indicator we have to first define it uh, as a field so we're gonna make a new private field that is of type indicator and let's call it the EMA indicator and inside the initialize method let's construct this in indicator by doing api dot register indicator let's call it let's say ema1 or just ema and the second parameter is going to be the place where the indicator is displayed so graph type has two values essentially primary and bottom and we let's say that we want to display this indicator in the primary chart which is uh, what makes sense for uh, an exponential moving average let's also display the uh, or let's set the color for this indicator uh, and uh, let's set it to let's say let's say uh, green uh, and be careful here that you import the color uh, type uh, from java.awt not from any of the other packages right so now the setup is done now we have to uh, calculate the uh, indicator value and display it so what we're going to do is implement two uh, interfaces one interface is going to give us uh, uh, the ability to observe all the trades that are happening in the market and the second one is going to be uh, called in intervals so let's uh, implement the first one which is called the trade the, the trade data listener which has one uh, method on trade and this on trade method is called uh, whenever a trade happens in the market the first argument is the price and the second argument is the size uh, so what we are actually going to do here is track the last price uh, in in a new field that we don't yet have let's create it 
this private uh, double s price is going to have a value of not a number at the beginning. Then uh, let's implement the second or the third uh, listener, which is the interval listener. And this in interval listener is going to have two methods. In the first one, the get interval method, we specify the frequency of our interval. We do this by doing intervals dot and specifying the, the value. Let's say that we want our interval to be one second. And this second method is uh, called whenever the interval uh, expires or takes place. So this is going to be called one, one time per second because this is what we defined here. And what do we want to do here? We want to essentially do two things. Uh, we want to update uh, our EMA value and we want to draw the indicator on the screen. So how do we update the EMA value? We're gonna have another field here called private double EMA value, which is going to be not a number at the beginning. And essentially what we're gonna do is set this value, update this value every time an interval happens. And uh, the first time that uh, this interval value gets called, um, the the value of EMA value is going to be not a number, right? And uh, when that happens, let's simply set the EMA value to the last price. And the uh, subsequent uh, calls should simply update the EMA value according to the EMA form formula, which is basically the, the previous EMA value times uh, the alpha parameter plus uh, the new price, the last traded price times 1 minus alpha and we're gonna define the alpha field shortly. One thing that we also have to check is that at the beginning uh, we don't necessarily have any uh, trade price uh, yet because maybe it takes a while before the first trade occurs. So let's add another check if the last price is not a number, meaning that no trades happened yet, let's simply skip this calculation. So from the first trade onward, will we be calculating the uh, EMA values? So now that we have calculated the <coughs> EMA value, let's simply draw it on the screen using the EMA indicator field. This is done by calling the add point method and uh, inputting as the first parameter the, the value itself. Okay, so now this is, should work. We only have to specify the alpha value. F for the beginning, for the start, let's simply hard code it uh, here at the top. And let's say that uh, the alpha value should be, let's say, 0 0.99, maybe. Okay, let's build our jar file here. Let's connect to the to one of the instruments. And let's load our indicator. Okay, here's our EMA indicator. All right. So the the EMA indicator is going to be calculated as soon as the whenever the first trade happens. So this is this is uh, here, right? And. Now the EMA indicator gets recalculated every second. Now if I if I unload the indicator and add it again, I'm going to see that that the value is only going to be calculated from 
the time I uh, loaded the indicator uh, onward. So I loaded it somewhere here, right? Now I need to wait for the first trade to happen until the first trade happens the indicator's value is not a number and after a while once we see the first trade the uh, indicator is going to be calculated okay now the trade happened and now the indicator is calculated every second how to calculate the value also for historical data as for showing it how to calculate it uh, for the uh, part from whenever we connected to this instrument onward. This is done simply by implementing the uh, historical data listener like this. Nothing else is needed. We can rebuild the jar, unload the old jar, or unload the old indicator instance edit again and now the value is calculated from from the time we connected to this instrument onward how to calculate also the indicator for the uh, this part the backfill part we call it to do that simply uh, simply implement another inter interface which is the backfield data listener like this let's rebuild the jar unload it load the indicator again and now the indicator is calculated for the whole the entire period uh, including the backfield data of course if i subscribed with uh, more historical data i would be able to see even longer periods of data okay uh, now let's see how we can change this uh, setting this alpha value to not be hard coded, but to instead be uh, something that the user of the program or indicate of the indicator can change. To do that, we uh, are going to add an annotation to this field called the parameter uh, annotation, and this annotation requires a few arguments, uh, which are the name. We can call it simply alpha. Then we need to specify the step, which is, let's say, 0.001. What's the minimum value? It's uh, probably 0. The maximum is, is 1. And reload on change should probably be true, which is also the default, so I don't even need to set it up. And the value that is specified here is the default value. So I'm going to rebuild this jar file unload it here wait for it to, to finish building okay edit ah so we get an, an error here why because uh, all the parameters have to be objects so uh, primitive values like double don't work do not work uh, and what's the fix for this? Simply change your primitive value into uh, an object, a wrapped object. So I'm going to again uh, build this jar file. And load it again. Okay, now the alpha parameter here is uh, in the settings. Let's say that I, I set it to 999, maybe. Uh, there's a slight bug where after I type the value here, the apply button doesn't yet change, so I need to click something here. 
Okay, and uh, after I change this value and click apply, the indicator gets recalculated here. Let's say that I change the value to a smaller value, hit apply, and now the indicator is calculated again. Let's say that I want to have two EMA indicators, one would be green, one would be blue, and as a trader I would be observing the relationship between the two. Maybe one would uh, be like a long-term EMA indicator, one a short-term EMA indicator. What do I need to do? I need to simply make another indicator field, make another EMA value field, add another alpha parameter, register the second indicator as well, specify its, uh, its color, and then uh, when, whenever the interval uh, is calculated uh, or is called, calculate also the second interval. This is it. Thank you for watching. If something is not clear, uh, please ask a question in the comments. Thank you. Thank you.